Suctioning is the one thing that you will probably be doing most frequently in your daily trach care routine. Let's start with looking at what equipment you will need to suction. Keep in mind that your medical equipment provider may have equipment that is essentially the same, but may look slightly different due to different manufacturers. Suction catheter kit. This will include at least one sterile glove, one sterile suction catheter, and usually some type of container to hold the HME while suctioning or to put saline in to clean the catheter. Sterile saline bullets. Ambu bag and oxygen should be within reach for emergencies or if your child needs oxygen as part of the instructions given by your doctor. Suction machine, stationary or mobile. If you can get one of both, it will be helpful to use the mobile suction machine in another area of the home. Extra trach, trach ties, and lubricant in case of emergency. Now we are ready to start the actual suction process. We are going to show you the sterile technique, which is how you will most likely be shown in the hospital. This technique minimizes the risk of bacteria or viruses being introduced into the trach tube, thereby helping to protect your child from respiratory infections. Although you will be using gloves, it is recommended you always wash your hands before and after suctioning your child. Before we show you an example of how to suction your child, we want to show you what you will actually be doing so that you can be confident that when you suction the right way, you are not hurting your child at all. If anything, you're providing them relief. It is always good to practice if you can so that you feel comfortable before doing the actual suctioning. The proper way to suction involves knowing how far down you need to insert the suction catheter. The easiest and safest way to do this is to measure your catheter tip against an extra trach tube that is the same size as your child's. The tip of the suction catheter should go to the end of the trach tube or just slightly past it, so if you can get an extra trach tube, try it. A lot of catheters have numbers on them, which will easily allow you to know where to stop. With our daughter's trach, I only need to go up to a 6 for a regular suction. I can go closer to 7 if I suspect a plug is forming and I need to go a little deeper, or if she's just a little extra gurgly. If your catheter does not have a number, you will have to eyeball about how far it should go. Okay, now let's begin. First, lay your child down on a clean surface. Then, open your suction catheter kit. Pick up the glove in the wrist area where it will have an inside out section. Slide the glove on your dominant hand being careful not to touch the exposed area of the glove. When you are first learning to suction, you may fumble with the glove but don't worry, you'll get better at it quickly. With a sterile glove, grab hold of the tip of the suction catheter. Twist the remainder of the catheter around your gloved hand. Your free hand can then bring the suction tubing to the end of the suction catheter and push it in. Turn the machine on with your clean hand. If your suction catheter has numbers on it, you can place your gloved thumb just above the measured number where you know you should stop. This way you know that you will not insert it too far. With your clean hand, hold your thumb over the hole at the end of the catheter. Do not press down on it yet. First, insert the catheter until you're at the desired length. Now, go ahead and press your thumb over the hole. Take a quick glance at the pressure readings. The needle should be between 80 to 100 millimeters for infants and 100 to 120 millimeters for children. Be sure that the needle is not above these set ranges as higher negative pressures have been shown to cause trauma. Slowly swirl around the catheter while drawing back slowly. The actual suctioning process is less than 10 seconds. Now stop and listen carefully. Do you still hear coarseness, or as we like to call it, gurglies? If yes, go ahead and pass the suction catheter down again. Usually two times is sufficient, but if the child is sick or is having an extra gurgly day, you may have to go down a third time. The goal is to allow the child to breathe freely and clearly. When suctioning, you should always take a quick glance at the mucus you are suctioning out. Although this sounds rather gross, you will get to know your child's mucus and you will be most able to judge when something has changed about it. By the way, don't be afraid to remind the doctors of this fact. You know when something is wrong and as your child's advocate, it is okay to insist. Ask yourself these questions. Is the mucus clear or white? If yes, that's good. That's the color you want to see. Is the mucus yellow or green? 
If yes, you may want to give a call to your child's doctor, especially if there's a foul odor coming from the trach. Please note that first thing in the morning mucus is often off color, so go ahead and wait a few hours to see if the mucus goes back to normal. Is the mucus very thin? You want the mucus to be thin, but if it seems very wet and thinner than usual, the child may be getting too much humidity. If this continues, you may want to consult your RT or doctor. Is the mucus very thick? Again, first thing in the morning you can expect some thickness, but if it continues it could mean your child is not getting enough humidity or it could be a sign of infection. Consult your doctor. If your child does have thick mucus in the morning or is experiencing a time when he or she has thicker mucus, you may benefit from introducing three to five drops of sterile saline from a saline bullet immediately before suctioning. It is not good practice to use saline every time you suction because you don't want to introduce too much fluid into the trach, which leads directly into the lungs. Just use it as needed and you should be fine. Additionally, the mucus may become thick due to dehydration. Make sure your child has plenty to drink every day so the secretions stay thin and do not block the trach tube. So now you know how to suction. I know the question we asked over and over after our daughter had her tracheostomy was, how often and how many times will I need to suction her? I got so frustrated when everyone gave me a generic answer like, you will just get to know your child. I did not understand that the seemingly generic answer was very true. When the child is gurgly, suction. You will soon start to notice what is normal for your child. Maybe your child will only need suctioning a few times a day, and maybe your child will be more like our daughter, the gurgly girl that she is, that needs it more like seven to 10 times a day. And if she's sick, or if it's an extra humid day, it's even more often. However, be careful not to over suction. A small amount of sound coming from the trach is normal. If it's mild and not causing your child distress, give him or her some time to try to cough it out. Over suctioning can result in overproduction of mucus, which can lead to an increased need for suctioning. Once you get to know your child's suctioning needs, it will be much easier to determine when an infection starts because you will notice that you need to suction more and the color and odor may change. It is important that you take the time after the tracheostomy while the child is still in the hospital to start to get to know what his or her suctioning routine will be like. Keep in mind that the time period after the tracheostomy will require more suctioning and if your child is a baby, he or she will most likely require more suctioning. If your child is going to have the trach for years, the child will eventually start to get strong enough to cough out secretions and will most likely not need suctioning as much. So get to know your child and you'll be a successful suctioner in no time.